thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started if that's okay. So, uh, how many of you guys are really enjoying OpenStack? <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick question. Uh, how many of you guys are asleep? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Michael Ade. I'm from Hewlett Packard. Uh, we also have Eric Sachs from uh, Oracle and uh, Glenn Foster uh, from Oracle as well. And uh, we have Nigel Cook from Intel. And uh, today we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about um, this uh, interesting, very polarized debate about pets and cattle and how we can, uh, how we can add some uh, current best thinking to it, as well as um, make OpenStack very safe for uh, these kinds of adorable little animals that um, it's ironic. So this is Eric's cat. <laughs> And, uh, and whenever I saw this picture, I said, did the cat really look at you like that? <laughs> because, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that cat does not have the typical disdain that most cats have for their masters, correct? Doesn't this look more like admiration than disdain? So he must be doing something right with his cat. And I suspect that's translating into um, stuff that he's doing right in OpenStack, although the correlation hasn't been established yet. So, um, <clears throat> how many people are familiar with the uh, the argument around pets versus cattle? Okay, if you're you're in the wrong place, you need to leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not that polar here. Um, so, pets versus cattle is a great argument for um, building a community because it's it's very elementary. It's very binary. Um, it helps people understand the concepts. Um, but it's really bad if you, it's, it's really great for illustration, but it's really bad for a community. And the reason for that is because this is a very polarized argument. And it, and it really doesn't have to be. Um, pets versus cattle is illustrative of the underlying uh, opportunities that we have within OpenStack. And uh, to approach this argument in the polarized way um, that it is currently being approached, it's not a bad thing, but it does, uh, it does create um, an interest gap, and it creates a, an exclusion. And in reality, OpenStack will be most successful when enterprises deploy OpenStack. Um, and I mean deploy OpenStack for more than just easy web workloads. Uh, when they deploy OpenStack for critical workloads, when they start using it for their, uh, their infrastructure, their, the spine of their organization. And uh, it is very well suited to do that in many cases. Um, there are clearly some opportunities that remain. But, um, but, you know, we want to begin depolarizing this argument as much as possible and understanding what the underlying implications are um, of this argument. And uh, the way that I generally think about this now is that it's no longer about pets or cattle. It's more about whether you have a highly managed workload or you have a workload that requires very little management, a lightly managed workload. So heavily managed workloads I equate to pets. And very lightly managed workloads I equate to cattle. <clears throat> And I think that if we, if we can understand those, uh, those ends of the argument and the stratification within that spectrum, then we can begin to uh, address the shortcomings inside of OpenStack that make it less acceptable for certain types of workloads. <clears throat> So again, uh, OpenStack uh, will win as infrastructure when it begins being deployed in areas of increasing criticality. And in order to do that, um, we'll pick up workloads that are increasingly important to the enterprise. Um, these workloads uh, have some general properties. Um, they uh, They become increasingly 
highly managed. Um, they tend to want to scale up instead of scale out. Um, they don't support uh, the, the architecture that's associated with cattle-based applications and, um, or cattle-designed cattle applications. They have uh, performance and reliability tied to the underlying infrastructure more closely, um, and they might not be as tolerant of the mechanisms for, uh, for dealing with single points of failure as cattle are. Um, so it's, this is not that they are bad. They, are, they were designed with a generation of architecture that existed prior to what the current gen is. Um, people have been developing applications you know, in various different schools over the last 25, 30, 40, 50 years. And these applications um, have, uh, the architectural schools of developing these applications have moved on. And so as, as we start looking at these, some of these are applications that have been continuously maintained inside of the enterprise. They still offer a supreme level of criticality for the enterprise. And so there, there's this principle of do no harm, right? Um, the, you don't want a significant re-architecture of an application if it's servicing a critical workload. Um, and, and these applications don't just exist within the enterprise, they also exist within the carrier space, um, within uh, the service provider space. So every, or, every audience has its own set of pets that it's trying to maintain. Uh, so more heavily managed workloads happen in a variety of dimensions. We're going to talk about these uh, dimensions throughout the presentation, but I would posit um, that there are storage-centric workloads. Um, so we have Oracle um, partnering with us on this presentation, and obviously it's, uh, it's a, a pet breeder, right? <coughs> no, 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 not pejorative. Like not pets. meant for, in a pejorative way. But then you also have network-centric workloads. So how many of you guys are participating in NFV working groups or working around NFV topics? So obviously, the network can be the source of pets as well. Storage can be the source of pets. Network can be the source of pets. I'm not sure about compute, but I want to fill that in. So if anybody has any great examples of how compute is the breeder of pets, then that would be great. So let's talk about pets and cattle. So. Um, so pets are born um, because uh, you need to service a workload, you need to buy some hardware. And you're going to buy that hardware in a very specialized way around that workload. And uh, you're going to rack and stack that hardware, and that, be and that is the beginning. That's the birth of the pet, right? Um, you install the servers, you configure them, you deploy and test. All of these infrastructures are supremely specialized around the pet. So the pet is not just the application. The pet is the infrastructure to host the application. The pet is all of the surrounding accoutrement that go, I'm practicing my French, that go along with that, that application, that make that application able to service the need that the application was designed for. And then you have the ongoing goo, let's call it, technical term, um, around the pet. You have to buy bedding for the pet. You have to feed the pet. You have to walk the pet. You have to pet the pet. Um, <laughs> you have care and feeding that goes along with the pet. You have, to, you have to manage the pet. You have to monitor the pet. You have to examine faults in the pet. You have to understand when those faults have occurred. Respond to those faults very quickly because this is a pet and you don't want the pet to die. Um, I prefer to call it, again, a highly managed workload. So this is highly managed by definition. So failure in any component of the pet, and I would argue that some pets are tolerant or some uh, highly managed workloads are more tolerant of failure in some components than others. Um, but this, again, is a specialized problem. So you have to understand the nature of the pet, and you have to uh, respond to the failures within the pet. So anatomy of the birth of a cow, <laughs> or anatomy of a cow, uh, so, uh, or cattle, depending on your perspective, or, or lightly managed workload, which I kind of prefer. Um, so you start with a workload. You don't start with hardware. Um, you don't really care about hardware. 
You don't really care about infrastructure. In fact, you don't really care about much of anything other than the application itself. So this begins with a workload. So the workload is the birth of, a ca of cattle. And it's deployed across a whole slew of virtual infrastructure. And it's deployed with very little dependence on underlying hardware. And it's deployed with um, very little dependence on state. So the cattle exist um, without any dependency on the underlying infrastructure the cat, and uh, this, is a, this is a very well architected cow, okay? So bear with me on this. They, they have no dependency on state. They have no dependency on storage. They have no dependency on network. They're just there. If they fail, you replace it. You replace it with another instance and you resume. And ideally, um, these are scale out. So you're not, um, you're, not depend as, you're not dependent on virtual infrastructure scaling up. You're dependent on uh, an array of infrastructure supporting the workload. So, uh, d if you need to add, if you need to add more scale, um, you just add another VM. You add more virtual infrastructure, and you continue on. And uh, since the cow, since the ailing cow, the sick cow, is uh, effectively stateless, you don't lose anything. Whenever the cow dies. You have very little investment in the cow. So, um, so cattle, so lightly managed workloads. Everybody, how many of you guys are transitioning enterprise workloads to OpenStack today? Two people. Am I in the right session? Yeah. Is this the right session? Oh, yeah. okay, just checking. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so uh, two of you are transitioning enterprise workloads to uh, OpenStack. That's awesome. Uh, you're probably dealing with, uh, you know, you're probably doing a lot of introspection right now. Uh, you're probably uh, looking deep into your soul and thinking, is this really what I want to do with my life? Um, <laughs> you're probably thinking, where did I go wrong? I have this thing. It's not the thing that I want. I need to change the thing that I have to be the thing that I want. Right? Am I pretty accurate? We've all been there. Okay, it's a dark time. We're going to see you through it because guess what happens? Um, the thing that you have is perfectly acceptable. Um, we accept you. Um, <laughs> we accept your thing. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's nothing wrong with having a pet. And in fact, um, if you didn't have a pet, then you probably wouldn't have a business. So um, we, we want to support that. And there are a variety of ways that we can. Um, <coughs> so, <clears throat> and you're going to have these things for a long time because in the future, um, you know, most people envision a future of nothing but cattle. Um, but pets are essential. Um, highly managed workloads will always, always exist. Um, there will always be scarcity. There will always be management required for these workloads. You will always have to have some degree of infrastructure capability specialization because that's where performance comes from. That's where capability comes from. If you could deploy on any generation of processor, any vendor of processor, any vendor of network, any capability of network, then that means that you're targeting, say it with me, lowest common denominator. And guess what comes from lowest common denominator? Or performance. So you will always have various levels of management associated with these workloads. And that's not a bad thing. The bad thing is whenever you have a dependency on something that doesn't exist in the system. And that's the reason that we have Nigel talking about when the enterprise and the work that's being done there and that we have the rest of the presentation which is far more important so I'm going to continue. <laughs> so meanwhile, uh, back at the enterprise, um, clouds are forming, right? People are deploying clouds because cloud's cool. Cloud's a new resourcing model. Cloud's a new management model. Cloud represents a tremendous advantage to the enterprise. Cloud represents the ability to fulfill business drivers for compute in new ways and address concerns that exist within servicing those types of business drivers. And so uh, many enterprises have and will um, deploy OpenStack. And this is important. 
because it allows them to fulfill their business objectives. And as they continue to grow, um, they get all the benefits that OpenStack brings, elasticity, scale, all the benefits of the hard work that's being done within the community. And they decouple their applications from their supporting infrastructure. Take it. You want to take this yeah, one? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm going to hand it off to Eric because you're probably bored with me anyway. No, no, no. Thanks, Mike. No, I think I'm okay. Set this down. Okay. Cool. This is going to roll off. I sense it. There you go. Okay. So to recap, I think, um, I think the position that we're seeing as we talk with a lot of enterprise customers, sort of, they're sort of caught between the promise and the interest of moving towards cloud and all, the, all of the benefits they see with cloud, all of the agility benefits, the ability to scale up, um, and to have more of a, a centralized self-service infrastructure. Um, but at the same time, they're sort of asking these questions, you know, I've got, you know, the vast majority or some key subset of the workloads that I run in my enterprise are pets. And so what am I supposed to do? What's my migration path forward, right? And, you know, per, per the slide that Mike just talked about, there's sort of the question of, well, yeah, so should I be looking at taking my pet application and, you know, try to try to sprinkle some kitty dust on it and somehow form it into, into cattle over time or look at, look at re-architecting it. Um, is that something that's possible? And, you know, in some cases it might be, but, you know, this is, this is kind of similar to what I think, you know, it's similar to the sort of trend of, you know, where years ago the vast majority of applications were all single-threaded and with the rise of multi-core and multi-threading, you know, you want to sprinkle on the multi-threaded dust and all of a sudden get some concurrency out of your application. Uh, and that's hard to do. In many cases, you have to sort of re-architect the application in a, in a very fundamental way uh, in order to do that. And, you know, as Mike was mentioning, there's a lot more to um, pets and cattle than just the workload itself. Uh, there's the infrastructure that's also sort of been designed or baked in when, when considering and conceiving the pet. Um, so it's difficult. So I, I think that, you know, there's one of two things here. Either, you know, as this plays out in the future, um, you know, either it will happen over time and folks will be successful with taking, you know, the applications that are implemented with pets and being able to re-implement and re-architect those in, as cattle. And I can, I can believe for a, some, some set of workloads that will actually happen. Or maybe for some it, it won't ever happen, but in either case, uh, it's going to take time. So, you know, this is really kind of the crux of, of this presentation, which is, you know, really sort of putting forth the notion that it's not just pets or cattle, it's both. Um, and both pets and cattle sort of need to be brought into scope here for, um, for OpenStack. So years ago, the Matrix, I, uh, I re reminded of this scene, the wisdom of the, of the young boy as he's, he's talking to Neo. And for whatever reason, I, I got to be thinking about this. And, um, you know, it's sort of, you know, answering this question around the conventional wisdom. Okay, well, if I can't re-architect my pet, can I go ahead and move my uh, pet into the cloud? And sort of the, the conventional of the wisdom around this today seems to go something like this. You know, do not try to, I won't do the, uh, the little accent, but I'll at least try to say this as best I can. Do not try to run your pet reliably on cloud infrastructure as a service. That's impossible. Instead only try to realize the truth. There is no reliable infrastructure as a service. Then you'll see that it's not the cloud that needs to be reliable, it's only your pet. And this, this seems to be um, the belief that a lot of folks abide by now. They just sort of, okay, yeah, cloud is this way, right? It's a sort of this unreliable infrastructure or it's this, rely it's this infrastructure um, that exists, and it's, it's great for cattle, and it's, it's perfect for scaling out, but it's not really a suitable home for, um, for my pet. But I think the thing that we would say <laughs> is what if we told you we can build a better cloud infrastructure so that pets can be managed too? And Mike makes the point um, that, you know, what we're, in a lot of cases, what we're talking about are, are SLAs. Some uh, applications have more SLA needs uh, than others you know, pets having more and, and cattle having less. So this was, this was also spoken to at the Atlanta summit. Uh, Toby Ford 
from AT&T got up on stage and, um, you know, this was acknowledged in his talk, um, you know, and very clearly, you know, Toby was mentioning about how uh, they've been one of the, the leading enterprise customers that's been making a lot of progress towards moving towards cloud adoption in the enterprise. But they sort of acknowledge, you know, the one thing that he was really worried about when talking about OpenStack and the OpenStack ecosystem is that the scope is too narrow. It's not just really about cattle applications. Um, you know, Toby says the pets have to be handled and they have to be managed and OpenStack really needs to bring pets into scope more clearly. So I'm going to hand it over to, to Nigel. This really is a tag team <laughs> episode here. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about Win the Enterprise. How many people have heard about this, uh, this initiative within the, within the foundation? Some people have. So let me give you a little bit of history on this. Um, part of what the OpenStack board does is um, survey users of OpenStack. And so Tim Bell of CERN uh, publishes a six monthly um, survey and gets back comments about um, what the structure of folks' clouds are, uh, oh, what they're doing in the clouds, and, and more importantly, comments about their clouds and about um, OpenStack and the work that the community does. And, and based upon that feedback, um, the, the OpenStack board met and realized that they needed to uh, kick off a, um, an initiative to look at um, the gaps that were basically limiting enterprises from adopting the, the community work. And so this was um, kicked off in the Atlanta summit. And since then, um, there has been uh, a lot of work going on with a lot of people from a lot of companies looking at the feedback, looking at um, uh, sort of maybe anecdotes from their use of the cloud uh, within their organization or, or for their customers, and, and, and sort of getting to a curated list of here are some top issues that we really need to fix if we want to um, accelerate the adoption of uh, OpenStack into the enterprise. Um, the, the work groups um, have got uh, sort of split off into a whole lot of application areas and um, as a result of those, um, those working sessions, there's a series of blueprints that have been um, proposed for uh, Kilo that are being discussed in the design summits um, over the next few days, as well as um, some things sort of uh, crept into Juno um, as well, um, there are sort of demos at, at various booths of some of the blueprint proposals which are aimed, uh, uh, aimed at making um, OpenStack more amenable to enterprise adoption. And, and in those areas, there's uh, a lot of items which sort of cover this, um, this PETS, uh, PETS initiative. Um, the demos, by the way, uh, I'll give a, sl a slight plug here. Uh, I am from Intel. If you come to the Intel booth, um, a number of the items here you'll see, uh, you can see demonstrations of those blueprints and some of the things that are being proposed uh, at the summit. Here is um, a list, and uh, uh, it's not so much of an eye chart, but uh, uh, when you get the slides, you can search for all these blueprints if you're interested in um, both the topic areas and the proposals from uh, various teams and how to uh, address the problems that have been uh, highlighted. And, you know, if you look at um, uh, some of these areas, you can also see things that were um, mentioned in the keynotes either uh, yesterday or today. So I remember if you remember the Time Warner uh, presentation and the BMW presentation about... Um, live migration of a VM with a volume, um, components about uh, live upgrade. Um, uh, and, and, you know, these, um, and, and VM availability, these components are, are areas that really um, scored highly in some of the surveys that were sent out, and people are looking um, specifically at, uh, at effort within the community to sort of solve these problems to get to, uh, a, you know, a new... Um, a more stable, more enterprise-friendly uh, infrastructure, and one that then is suitable for running both um, pets and cattle. So, uh, you know, I'm going to sort of wrap up here, and we have time for for a little bit more in in terms of questions from folks. 
So I want to just really recap about this. Um, you know, if you, if you want to build um, a solid house, you build upon a rock. And so the infrastructure and the infrastructure that you design for your cloud needs to be, um, needs to be a good one. And in fact, if you look at um, the, the large public cloud providers and their infrastructures, they're actually very well designed. They actually use um, high-end um, components because what they're trying to do is get um, extreme density, extreme performance. And in fact, it's those same architectures which are also able to run those scale-up applications. Um, the, the carriers are, um, uh, have quite demanding service level requirements. As they look at the infrastructure they need to support, they came back with these same sorts of things that actually really the enterprises have been saying as well, you know, how do you upgrade? You know, what am I going to do when I have a, uh, a firmware patch? How do I drain a machine um, to do that patch without disrupting everything in the system? The same requirements are coming back again and again. From a compute perspective, there's a variety of different hypervisor models that are available. KVM is great, um, so is VMware, so is Hyper-V, so is Solaris. Um, they are all uh, perfectly valid hypervisor choices that we need to support and, and uh, which are being supported now in the community to, uh, put, to keep uh, enterprise workloads running happily and transitioning easily. And then high availability um, is really about, um, in my mind, having an infrastructure which is amenable to, um, to common maintenance operations. Maintenance is the biggest cause of failure of an application. And so if you can't uh, maintain your infrastructure in a way without killing your cloud for six hours, um, then you, know, you haven't got a cloud that's really suitable for anything. So that's our presentation. Um, maybe, if, and I'm feeling blinded by this light here, um, if there's some questions uh, that people have to ask now, we can, um, we can jointly try to field them. Oh. You guys are too kind. <laughs> Oh, come on, there's got to be at least one question. One in, in the room. back. There's two. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So the question is, <clears throat> for the assumption stated in the slides was that uh, cattle are largely stateless. And how does it relate to, uh, to applications that are dependent on new types of state, <clears throat> like those delivered through Trove and other services like it? So the question uh, further stated is, uh, when you have state-based state applications, applications that are relying on state, are they pets or can they be cattle? Correct. And what I would argue is that uh, pets and cattle are, is a binary concept. And uh, that there is no cattle, there is no notion of a cow, and there is no notion of a pet. That they exist in a continuum and that state is one of the factors that causes a workload to be highly managed. Um, and that concept has been socialized as a pet. And so uh, pets don't just come from state, but they come from a lot of different factors. They come from dependence on hardware. They come from dependence on other applications. They come from dependence on state. They come from dependence on storage. And all of these, all of these uh, dependencies in aggregate are the definition of a pet. Because the more dependencies that you have, the more management you have to maintain the workload. And so, so I'm, I, I agree with your point that state can move around. Um, 
But the notion of state, the, the, the requirement to have context, um, is a, is a, it creates a dependency which creates a management activity. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> want the microphone? Uh, yes, please. Can you hear me? Yeah. So what about the idea that each applicates, applications that are suited for one type of hardware environment should remain there? So an airline system that was built on the mainframe maybe is best run on mainframe, and um, ERP, SAP, something, or Oracle is best suited for physical servers and maybe virtualized and email and other three-tier applications could be virtualized on a virtual, you know, um, VMware Zen KVM platform, but the new OpenStack is designed for stateless cloud applications like streaming, like Netflix, like, um, and each, yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you, you see here in Paris, a small, a small um, economy car is where suited for the traffic and the parking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you want to drive down to the coast, you may want something comfortable or a, yeah. a comfortable bus. I think I think one of the I think one of the points of the presentation, and I think we're seeing this with OpenStack, and I think this is one of the things that's really quite appealing about OpenStack is its flexibility in enabling cloud deployers to um, deploy a choice or a different mix of different technologies within the cloud itself. And um, I could see it being a totally viable path where if you have a particular pet that has um, a particular need around infrastructure, um, being able to leverage the heterogeneous support that OpenStack offers for systems and virtualization to be able to take that system and bring that in the fold of the cloud, right? Because I think, I think that's sort of the, the, the false choice that so often exists, which is um, you know, either Either I can have the benefits of cloud infrastructure, or I can, you know, have my workload and have it have to sit outside of the cloud and not be managed. And I think that, you know, as the OpenStack ecosystem enriches and grows and has support for a more diverse set of virtualization and system technologies, uh, the chances are going to be increasingly good that for a wider variety of enterprise deployed applications that OpenStack will be able to manage those as well. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Thank you for coming, guys. We really appreciate it. Yep, thank you.